Hello aspirants, welcome to the Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel. This is the third video in the series, Cracking UPSC the Right Way. In this series, we have been addressing the common doubts and questions that UPSC aspirant has uh, while preparing for the civil services examination. And in this first video, we discussed about the common mistakes that has to be avoided by an aspirant. And in the second video, we address the question of how much marks to score in mains to secure ranking. And now, in this third video, we are going to discuss the top 10 rules that need to be adhered by an aspirant for clearing the UPSC examination, especially the preliminary examination. So, this video will help you to maximize your scores in the preliminary examination. So, remember, this video will not only help you in your prelims preparation, but you can use these 10 rules in your whole preparation. Now, without wasting much time, let us look into these 10 rules one by one. Before that, you have to understand that preparation is not a single thing. It doesn't just involve academic part, but it also involves certain non-academic parts. So, in this regard, we are now going to discuss a combination of rules which has a concoction of body, mind and literature. And here, literature is the soul part. So, without this soul, mind and body does not have any use. Now, assume that your preparation is like brewing a coffee. Now, for making a good coffee, what do we need? We need certain ingredients. But is ingredient enough to make a good coffee? No. We need these ingredients in correct proportions. Then only your coffee will not only taste good, it will also smell good. So, in a similar way, in a UPSC preparation, you need the concoction of body, mind and literature and they have to be in correct proportions. Then only you are in the right path of clearing this examination. Now, let us look at these 10 rules. The first rule is regarding how to take care of your mind. So, we are going to address the mind part in this. So, the first rule is inculcating the belief. What do we mean by that? You have to first believe that you will clear the exam. Unless you believe yourself, it is difficult to clear this examination. So, inculcating this belief is as much as important as the academics part. You have to believe that you will clear the exam and your name will appear in the final PDF. So, inculcating this belief means staying away from toxic people. In other words, we can say that have those people around you who have positive beliefs because their positive beliefs will reinforce your belief in clearing the examination. So, understand the first rule is inculcating the belief. Now, the next one is the second rule. This is a combination of mind and body. So, what is it? It is about relaxing your mind and body. Now, for relaxing your mind, you can try meditation. You can allot half an hour of your daily preparation for meditation. Now, for body, what you have to do? For body to relax, you need a good night's sleep. See, uh, the number of hours someone needs to have a good night's sleep may vary from person to person. So, you can allot either 6 hours to 8 hours for a good night's sleep. So, why sleep is an important part of our preparation? See, this sleep will revitalize your brain. It will make you to remember whatever you have learned throughout the day. So, that means sleeping, not only it will give you the much needed rest, but it will also energize you or it will rejuvenate you for your next day's preparation. Without a good night's sleep, your next day will not be that much good. So, remember the second rule is about relaxing your body and mind. Next comes the third rule. This third rule is about making yourself physically fit. So, first for that what you have to do? The first one is regarding the diet. Your diet should be full of rich fibers. So, a diet rich in fibers is important for the preparation. Along with this, your everyday routine should involve a particular duration for doing flexible exercises. You can allot around 40 to 50 minutes for this purpose. So, every day have a good diet along with flexible exercises. 
Now the fourth rule, it is about your leisure time activity. So when we talk about preparation, everyone thinks that uh, reading and learning and memorizing is the only thing that we have to concentrate while preparing for examination. But it is not so. It doesn't mean that you have to put all your concentration in the academic related activity. Rather, you should also have certain leisure time every day. And in this leisure time, you can do your favorite activities such as uh, you can paint, you can read, you can dance, or you can even play your favorite sport, you can read a fiction. So like that, whatever interests you, you can do in this particular leisure time. And make sure that you do not involve any gadgets in this uh, leisure time activity. Why? Because for example, if your leisure time activity depends on using your phone, then you may get easily distracted by using the social media platforms. So rather than wasting your time in the gadgets, do something else. You can sing, you can dance, you can uh, do anything that interests you, that makes you not get bored by the uh, preparation or the studying which you have been doing from the morning. So a lot time for some leisure time activity. So, so far we have seen the mind and body part of our preparation. Now we are going to see the rules that is solely based on our academics part. So in the academics part, the first rule or in the total 10 rules, the fifth rule is going to be about planning. So by planning, what do we mean? This planning means making a blueprint. See this planning is the utmost importance in your preparation. Why? Because a goal without planning is just a wish. So make plans, have a blueprint. And what should this blueprint contain? This blueprint should have your everyday activity listed on hourly basis or uh, weekly basis or even on monthly basis. So by this, what do I mean is that this planning part should involve all your you know the ones I said in the first four rules the leisure time activity you have to allot time for that you have to take time for relaxing and uh, you have to take time to interact with people uh, to have to get their positive vibes so all this should be a part of your planning and the most important part of your planning should be the study plan because we are discussing about the academics part of our preparation so in this study plan, you should have uh, weekly targets and monthly targets. This is very much important. And every week you should also make daily targets. Now don't make daily targets for, you know, 30 days in a row. You will not be able to keep up with it. Initially make weekly targets and then monthly targets. Then every week you make some daily targets. So that means these daily targets will be your sub plan of your study plan. So the fifth important rule is about planning now the sixth important rule is writing mock tests mock tests should be a part of your study plan the study plan which we just discussed in the above rule a lot a particular time in your week for mock tests attending mock tests at any cost is important an aspirant who is missing mock test is doing one of the most foolish things in preparations. Why? Because mock tests are, you know, it is an example of where your preparation is going. So it is your own assessment of your preparation. You will know which is your strong area. You will know which is your weaker area. You will know which is your strong subject or on what areas you have to focus more in your preparation. So all these aspects you'll get to know once you attend mock tests. And a preliminary examination of 2021 is around the corner. So if you have not joined any mock tests yet, please join now. Now, along with writing mock tests, two other important things you have to do. The first one is attending the test discussions. See, whenever institutes, they conduct mock tests, they also conduct the test discussion part. You can attend this and you will know where you are making the mistakes. So test discussion should be clubbed with analysis of your test and once you analyze you will obviously know where you are lacking in your preparation so if you think you are lacking in some part of your preparation or you have not performed well in a particular subject or in a particular area then you can allot more time for that subject you can do more revisions and you can attend more questions or more tests 
in that particular area. So making plan for mock test along with sticking to your plan is important and this is the sixth rule that you have to follow. Now the seventh important rule that you have to follow is about the specific tests. These specific tests, they should be based on previous year question paper. You can uh, fix these tests subject wise or even chapter wise. If you do this, you will have an idea about how UPSC asks questions in the preliminary examination. So do this. After that, you can either evaluate that test on your own or you can use the help of your friend. So it depends on your own discretion. So the seventh important rule is specific tests based on previous question papers plus discussion with peers. Now the eighth important rule is about the subjects that you are going to cover. When you talk about subjects in UPSC preparation, we have the conventional subjects and we also have the current affairs part. So balancing these two is going to be your eighth rule. In this eighth rule, what we are going to do is we are going to spread our study plan in a way that we are going to cover three conventional subjects in that week. Along with this, you should also cover either the monthly current affairs or the weekly current affairs of that week. So make sure that your study plan includes time period in such a way that you get time for your conventional subjects and also for current affairs preparation. Now regarding conventional subjects, we have the NCRT or if you have attended coaching, you have the coaching institute's notes. Now for current affairs, what I would suggest is you should follow one particular source. Don't go for many sources, uh, you will get confused. Now regarding current affairs, we already have the Hindi News Analysis program in our Shankar Ice Academy's YouTube channel. We put videos on the current affairs news and we analyze those news every day. Apart from this, you can also visit the IAS Parliament website powered by Shankar Ice Academy. This website will also give you monthly current affairs relevant to your preparation. So normally when talking about balancing current affairs along with the conventional subjects, what you have to focus is that you should relate the current affairs part with the static portion of the conventional subject. So this will help you to relate to what is happening and you can enhance your mains answer writing if you do this regularly. So remember the conventional subject and the current affairs part shouldn't travel in a parallel path, rather they should intersect. So this is your eighth important rule. Now the ninth part of our preparation is the one which we usually say whenever we talk about UPSC preparation. It is on revision. Revision is important. Revision is important next to planning and mock tests. So you, you should allot maximum time for your uh, revision and in that maximum time should be allotted for your conventional subjects revision like uh, revision of polity, economics, geography, science and tech etc. You should allot maximum time for these subjects. Now when it comes to current affairs you can revise the monthly current affairs at the end of the each month. So why revision is very important part of our preparation because it helps you to put whatever you have learnt into your permanent memory. It helps you to retain the subject in your permanent memory. So revision is important. Now the tenth important rule is completing your targets promptly. What do I mean by this? See your study plan which we talked about it should involve short term goals along with the long term goals. Don't just set the long term goals because you will not be able to achieve it. For example, you have a goal of attending a mock test this weekend. You, have, you are planning to attend history mock test and you have planned that in your weekly targets you have planned that you will uh, cover the ancient history part and the modern history along with the world history. So what if you don't cover the modern history part of syllabus? If you don't do this what will happen on the day of mock test is that you will lose the confidence. You will think that you have not done enough preparation so either you will not attend the mock test or what you will do is even after attending you will not be confident enough to evaluate it and once if you score low in that you will be having the fear that you are not good in that particular subject and that is why finishing your plan promptly is important have long term goals with short term goals so this is the 10th rule
if you do all these if you religiously follow all these 10 rules then clearing the examination will be a walk in the park so i hope that these 10 rules will help you to clear your exam if you like this video don't forget to like comment and share and to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel for more updates related to civil services preparation thank you